Hello, my team and I at InVivo started free counseling services uh, last week for people who are struggling to deal with this unique situation with the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, quite a few people got in touch with us. And while talking to these people, we identified that there are a few set of questions or issues that people are repetitively presenting. And so we've decided to try and address some of these questions or issues uh, in a series. And in this video, I'd like to address the, uh, the most common question really that people have been presenting, which is this, right? That, uh, look now, we've been in this lockdown for uh, a couple of weeks already there's a week more to go, but it looks like it's likely to extend. And we really have no clear picture about till when. So given this situation, uh, people are feeling anxiety symptoms kind of come back, right? And with those anxiety symptoms, a lot of negative thoughts keep churning in the mind. Uh, people are ruminating about a lot of various possibilities, worst case scenarios, etc. And that's affecting their appetite, their sleep, and some other aspects of their life as well. So how can we deal with this? That's the question that I'm going to address. And I'm going to keep it quite short and specific. Uh, let's see if we can deal with this issue uh, with the help of three tools, right? So the first tool that may help is this is to make a distinction between a probability and a certainty, okay? Now, given this situation, what we definitely don't have is a certainty. We don't have any kind of a certainty about how long will this last, when will it end, what's the picture going to be a month from now or two months from now, and we don't have any of that certainty. Uh, but what we definitely can know is that the probability of damage and risk can be minimalized if we take all the necessary precautions. If we don't give up yet. I know it's a bit much to ask people to uh, hang in there during this lockdown for a longer period now because people have already been doing that Maybe we've exhausted uh, some of our energy already But having said that the only way that we're going to keep the probability of danger low is by continuing to hang in there and by continuing to follow certain restrictions and certain regulations and the fact that the probability can be kept low is quite encouraging, isn't it? That even though we don't have the certainty, the probability can be kept low. And if we keep our focus on that, that can be uh, very hope giving, isn't it? So I think that's the first point to remember. That's the first tool. The second is this. Can we look at our own thoughts and emotions from a distance? I'll explain what I mean. Right now, our mind is impulsively reacting to this situation. We do better for a few days and there's a slump again. In any case, whenever there's a slump, whenever we're feeling down again, or like as if we were incapable to deal with the situation, remember that the mind is creating these emotions and these thoughts impulsively because it's, you know, dealing with this kind of a situation, uh, possibly for the first time. And therefore, right now, we can't trust all thoughts and emotions that occur to our mind. We can't take them to be the truth and, and use them to make our decisions, right? We've got to keep our focus on the facts, the facts which are being presented to us uh, and which are going to help us to keep the probability low, as I said, but we've got to be careful in following certain kind of thoughts and certain kind of emotions 
that may be based more on our inferences and evaluations of these situations, which may not be accurate because our mind is right now going through an emotionally turbulent phase. And in such a phase, you, we cannot expect our mind uh, to be very accurate in its information processing or its comprehension or its analysis of data. So let's be careful. Let's not get reactive. Let's create a distance and look at our thoughts and emotions. Observe them, but don't react to them. That's the second tool. And the third and the final tool in this video that I want to talk about is this. Can we ask ourselves, have I dealt with a crisis before in my life? A crisis that involved threat, involved uncertainty, involved possibly some kind of loss too. Have I or have I not? I think for most of us, the answer is going to be yes, I have. And if we have, can we remind ourselves of how did we deal with it? Because we did deal with it, right? We struggled, but we dealt with it. We survived it, right? So obviously we told ourselves, yes, this is difficult but I can survive it. And now when you look back, you can see evidence that you survived it, right? I can remember crisis in my life that I have survived. And when I think of that, it really helps me to build up hope that I'm going to survive this one too, because I know that I have the strength and the tools required to survive a crisis like this, even when it is difficult, right? So I'm hoping that these three tools can be helpful to people dealing with uh, this difficult situation and I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you.